Hi Dylan, sorry, I didn't see your last question, which was uh, related to um, uh, tips on auditions. Okay, let's do this. Um, I would say um, if you don't have a lot of time, I would say audition every single day because you're gonna get better, but don't do it rote, like, uh, like, oh, I'm just doing another audition. It's like really try your best with every single audition to be the best character, that, to get to the character. Um, that way you're always learning and improving. If you're only doing what you think you should be doing and you're not probing further, then you're probably not going, going to be improving by every single audition that you're doing, which is the goal. Okay, um, I go to uh, Google and look up 12 guideposts. And that is from a book called Audition by Michael Shirtleff. If you can, grab that book, read it, apply it. That's what I do for every single audition. Then obviously answer the five questions, so the five W's. Um, what do you want? As a character, you always want something. And scenes in films are not scenes of the everyday life. Like usually you don't see your character making breakfast on a normal day. You see a character making breakfast on the day that she knows she has to fire this guy that she has also been seeing secretly. And that's, you know, that's how we see how hard it is to just try to have a normal day, right? Um, so it's always heightened reality that we're looking at in films. Um, it's like the most, you know, the peaks of important moments in one's life. So um, you, when you have stakes, they're really, really high. So you always have to ask yourself, how can I make the stakes higher without exaggerating? It's like, okay, so if I win, so if I get to keep the relationship but still fire him um then i win because i get to be with him and hopefully he'll be in a better job than he was in in my company for instance and if i lose i lose a good worker and i lose the love of my life you know those it's like i win meaning he gets a better job and i get to be with him my lo the love of my life or if i lose and he gets really angry and they lose the relationship plus a good work in the company, that's a huge stake. And that's what you want. If you always want, what are, if I win, I get this amazing thing. And if I lose, I lose a lot. And that is like putting pressure on your character, which is ultimately the, the truth of the character in that scenario. You always want to dig deep. Okay, so the five W's were like, okay, what do you want? Uh, in this case, it would be, I want my partner to say that he understands and that he's gonna look for another job and that he will love me no matter what that's what i want so for him to so you, you've described it big but now let's narrow it down to the smallest thing possible which is you want that person to do something very specifically like i want this person to hug me or to say something i want this person to say i will always love you no matter what we always want very specific things. Like even if you're talking to your parents, you always want something out of the situation. At least these, these characters do. So what do you want? Why do you want it? And then, but before you go into acting the scene, only focus exactly what you want. Don't start bringing up the why you want it because um, this is right before doing the scene, right? Only do your dig super deep during the homework building time okay uh when you're about to jump into the audition forget about the homework and trust that it will be there and this is probably one of the biggest things that amateur actors uh and professional actors differentiate in i think one of the things is that professional actors act even though and they go to auditions even though they don't feel like it it's like or if you're feeling slightly under the weather, you're still gonna give a stellar performance because you're a professional. It's like, you're gonna show up and do the job, right? Um, which is the same thing, it's like a uh, CEO is feeling slightly under the weather, but they will still, you know, go show up for work, which is what we're doing, we're professionals. Anyway, um, and yeah, so, so the other difference between amateur and professional actors is that an amateur, and this I, I can speak about this because I used to do this and sometimes I still catch myself wanting to do this, which is we do so much fucking work. So imagine that this is the metaphor of like, we've done this crazy amount of work on a single character, single edition, and we just really wanna show them that we've done this amazing work. So we wanna be conscious about putting the homework in the scene. That is the biggest mistake because that means that you're in your head. What does that mean? That means that 
when you're acting, you're also evaluating. It's like, your perspective when you're in the scene you ideally want to be flowing right you just want to you have rehearsed the words so much that you're not looking for the words right and even if you have a little time to prepare you might have the slides in your hand but and so but you're still so used to the words that they're just coming out you don't have to think about it okay you forgot one line quickly look back then look back to your person to your scene partner because literally everything that you might want is in their face like they are giving you everything that you need to know so it's always about the other person it's not about yourself but if you're thinking about the homework then you're not focused on your scene partner you're focused on yourself and that is the death of acting um because we have this like monitor sometimes you know like if you're judging your performance you're not in the performance some people say and you said you're 24 this is why i'm gonna say this but um audition psych there's a book really good uh called audition psych which really will help you because it's all about auditioning um and basically they say that good sex is when you're just in it if you're thinking damn this, this is good sex it's more like well you're not in it therefore it might not be the best the same thing with acting if, if you're thinking like oh i think i'm doing a really good job it, you're not acting you're outside of yourself you're using your mind to try to judge your performance, meaning you're not in the performance. Cause we can only be in one place. Our mind can only be in one place at a time. So we can only be either acting and fully immersed in it. And when you're done, you're like, wow, that was wild. But you're already done with the scene. If you're thinking, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. Throw that thought away. And the beautiful thing about acting as with any performance, whether you're, a, you know, you just, get with the analogy that we're athletes because that's the easiest way to to describe it it's like the more you do it the easier it is to to be better at the skills that you need for acting so one of the skills would be how to turn off the voice in your head so when you're acting sometimes a voice will be like oh that was shit don't matter didn't listen keep going and so ideally what ends up happening is that the voice becomes smaller and smaller it still will sometimes pop pop in but you already know this voice so you don't give shit about it you know because if you are moved by that voice or thrown off by that voice and the funny thing is like for instance i started singing later in life and i would get this voice which was a mammoth of a voice right compared to the active voice which i've been training for some time for acting at, and i feel really confident about acting so the voice is smaller and if it shows up whatever i'm like in the scene I don't and like the majority of time it just doesn't show up because i'm in the scene and this is my job and this is what i love to do and blah blah and i've worked on it a lot but with with singing it was like you are shit <laughs> and so the more that we are doing it and, and that would throw me off and i wouldn't be able to finish the song because i i would think that everybody here thinks this is the worst thing they've ever heard um, and that probably is not true. Um, so it was just like, that voice doesn't help you. And it's okay if you have it. Um, know that through practice, it is going to almost completely disappear. So keep at it. You can do it. Um, okay. Another advice. Okay. So we were saying the five W's. So what do you want? Which we've realized you have, you can look at it throughout the scene, understand the character, and then go down to... Um, very specifically, a very specific action you want from the other person. I want them to give me a hug. I want them to pat me on the back. I want them to say happy birthday. I want them to say I am sorry. And most likely that not. Or and then you will probably not. Well, your character by the end of the scene uh, or middle of the scene or start of the scene, whatever they get or they don't get what they want. What if two lines down the scene, the person says, I'm sorry. And then you, what you thought was going to be what you, your character really wanted, then you change to a second want, which is, I want them to say they will never do it again, or I want them to leave, which is not that helpful, but, or I want them to fill in the blank, whatever you want. So it can be that within a scene, you have two wants. For instance, I had a want here and then it changed and then another want here. So then that just gives your scene more life and your character is pursuing different things. You can have an overall want, like an overarching want, 
uh, throughout the film, like my character just wants to be loved. But what is that? How does how do we break it down for every scene? And within the scene, how do we break it down for different moments? What are, how does that want show up? Um, okay, so what do you want? And then figure out what how can I make the stakes you know the most thrilling? Uh, why do you want it? Where are you? So, oh my God, <laughs> ah, there's so much information, Dylan. It's like, go to class. <laughs> um, okay, uh, where you are means, uh, but honestly, this book gives you all the information. I kid you not. This and Audition Psych and Audition by Michael Shirtliff. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, so basically, what you want to do is that you want to imagine, go through, um, and this book at the end gives you how to do it. So basically you, at the beginning, um, we're gonna get to where, okay? But let's let's dig into this. So first of all, you write, you read the scene and you write down what are the givens. Um, okay, so my character um, puts on a jumper, my character drinks a glass of water. That is both two things that the character does. And then, um, so the stimulus, when my, um, uh, my character is told that she is having a baby, her response seems to be like she needs, she grabs a glass of water. Uh, when my character is, um, uh, surprised, she seems to, uh, yeah, just need water. Okay. The wise then, uh, anyway, but <laughs> the thing is like, this is really big, but just get the book because I'm still learning about this and, uh, complete the house of behavior. Ask why your uh, behavior might occur. What overall big picture issues might account for this behavior? For example, does the character have issues with intimacy, trouble with authority, parental neglect, or a number of other issues that character might have dealt with in the past? And then, uh, you have the core knowledge. So you start building the character from like when they were a baby but obviously this is if you already like if you already have the job then yes do all this work and then they also have a smaller version which you're still doing this but like a slimmer version for an audition because you don't have like potentially that much time um but yeah from ages three four and five you start understanding like for instance for this audition what i did was yeah what does this character do what does this show about this character and i also imagined okay so this this is super important the female friendship. So I imagine that my char my character and the other character were best friends since seventh grade. But I just didn't say it. I imagined us playing in the playground. I ima I imagined us high fiving. I imagined the first time I saw her, uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's the coolest girl. I want to be best friends with her. Um, but from a seven year old perspective, and so you start building up the character from there. And wh why this is all relevant to the character of the question of where is because. The scene takes place, imagine if the scene takes place in, in, in my apartment, right? This is, this is my character's apartment. This is a set. This is, this is the, the character's apartment. So then this sofa, what are the memories for the sofa? If this is a scene about a breakup or if this is a scene about whatever, yeah, let's just go with breakup. Then, um, this sofa might be, oh my God, the first time that, you know, I moved to this place. The first person I invited in was this guy that I was quasi seeing. And we made passionate love, you know, on the sofa. Uh, this is not based on my real life, of course, but, um, but yeah, so then there's, so, and then I remember all the times that we sat here and ate pizza and watched TV. I remember the times that we would, you know, just have a nice like tea break or whatever. And, and then, so when he sits down and then he says like, you know, we're done on this sofa, the meaning of just being here and that is your homework because when you're in the scene and you're acting and you're on the sofa, then you're not thinking about, oh, I should be suffering more because this is, you know, what this sofa means. It's more like you're naturally going to be affected by these things. So where means that, oh, have a very clear idea of, what each piece of furniture in the scene means to you. That's like when you're going to be on set and act, take a moment to really think, okay, you know, uh, what, what does this highlighter mean to me? Like the, it's not a coincidence that there's a highlighter on set right here on the table, especially if it's like the only thing on the table, then this is the highlighter that he gave me when I got into my dream university program. 
um, and it was a way of saying, I believe in you, you're going to ace it, and here you go for your next study. And so, it, like, everything has an emotional reason to exist. So, and wear as well gives you um, just a feeling, like, if you are at a doctor's appointment, a new doctor that you've never been, and you're being told that, you have, that you're pregnant and the baby might have issues then it's really alien because the lights are really bright and you've never been here before and everything feels very cold and unwelcoming uh, whereas if it's you're going to you know your child's doctor the pediatrician that you that has all, was also your pediatrician and so you love just being here and even though the doctor's like yeah there's my there's some complications with the child you still feel like you know what you wouldn't have any other person in the world tell you this and this is the same chair that your mother was in many years ago and you still get to look into the eyes of this man that you trust with your life um so where you are is incredibly important okay so what you want why you wanted where you are um who you are and uh, that's huge again so who i think about okay so who am i this is so what i'm telling you is that like this I got while I was living at, uh, in LA and taking a class at UCLA. Um, the stakes I got through drama school, a teacher, I believe it was uh, Dan Hurd, but it might have been like anyone because they're, they're, it's a very useful idea. Um, and then there, I had another teacher who did this amazing act of generosity, which is that he gave us Richard Kant. Um, he's a phenomenal actor and he's actually in season four of The Crown. Um, he is this guy that was in government, a member. Anyway, the, you can look him up. And then he gave us this sheet uh, full of all the things that he does for every single character that he does, like how he does his character work. And I was like, I can't believe that as a working actor, you're being so generous that you're giving us your life work because each actor, that's what we do. We scour the internet, the classes, our friends, the books, everything that we can to form our own toolbox, right? And the reason why I want to help is because I was very lost um, at the beginning. I had been born and raised in Peru, and at that time, there was a lot of terrorism, so the arts dwindled. And I also was born into a family that was very foreign to this specific form of art, which is acting. And our school didn't have many acting resources. Um, so I was so fucking lost. I was like, all I know is how to memorize a text. And I know that I love being on stage because I love telling stories, but I don't know how to be the best actor I can be. And I remember feeling so lost, so alone, so incredibly heartbroken when I realized that not everyone was happy about my decision of being an actor. So sometimes you're born into a family that is full of actors and then you're like, oh my gosh, this is such a natural choice for me. Sometimes it's not so natural. Either way, I want to help out because it's silly for, for the world to be deprived from really good raw talent if just because they can't access good acting information. Okay, so who? This who exercise I get from Richard Kant when he gave us this sheet of paper which again is probably one of the most generous things an actor has ever done for me or for us because it was not just me as a class who you go into and I have the sheet on my computer so I'm sure I could share it but one of one of the small one of the things it was saying say five words defining who you are so the you're trying to understand the character so if I say this woman who has a baby that has issues uh, or this just found out that her baby is gonna have I don't know, 12 years more to live or something like that, then uh, why is it so dramatic? I don't know. But uh, okay, let's say something else. And we've just found out that this, that she's getting married. Okay. Okay. So who do I think? So who am I? I am flirty. I am courageous. I am optimistic. I am very colorful and I am a friend. So those are the five words that came up for this character that I imagine is getting kind of, that is getting kind of married. married. Um, and then the other person in the scene is going to be the guy that's proposing, the, the partner. So who would also be the other person? So who is this person? He is um, very moving or touching that he, you know, makes me feel stuff. So 
um, let's say touching. He is very attentive, detail oriented, um, uh, super sexy, and then um, kind hearted. I think that was like a repetition, but even if the word is repeated, it just means that my character's perspective of that character is like that is highlighted. Um, so if you just at least have five, it just gives you a perspective of who the character thinks she is, who the character, what the character thinks the other person is. And so that's underlying the word of who. And uh, you can also ask the question of like, the world is, my sexuality is, um, marriage is, you know, it's like all the themes and topics and things that are mentioned in the scene, you want to explore them fully. That's what makes good acting. You know, it's like everyone can get a scene and do a good, decent acting job. Uh, they'll probably just do the obvious choice right and in the end that's like just the base layer of are you a, an actor and then the next level of being an outstanding actor is saying like okay truly digging deep of who this character is and then taking those just like those choices strongly i heard once that i think it was viola davis who said she'll try she'll do the scene exactly the opposite of what it's told so if the scene is you know a fight scene and the woman, it says shouting in, in parentheses and then the, her script, she will say that line, those lines in the quietest way she could ever do. So the whole point is that um, she just does the opposite, which I think is a very smart move because if you're on the casting side and you're listening to the same monologue or the same scene 25 times in the past like few hours, you're just like, give me something I haven't seen. Also, cause I've been on the other side, I have produced two short films. And personally, I don't know if this because I'm an actor, but I was like, I want you to show me what you can do with this character. I want to be, I want to have fun. You know, I want this to be a collaboration. Some act, some, um, some directors and producers are very, very specific about what they want. They're like, I want a geeky person for this role and I want them to have a lisp and I want them blah, 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 blah. Um, so fair enough. And they're not going to budge. But if you read the script and think, wow, this is the way I see it and it is not geeky and it doesn't have a, a lisp, you know, then go for it because ultimately it's your chance to act on a Tuesday afternoon as uh, my, uh, Michael Kostrov, uh, who is the one who wrote Audition Psych says. Um, ultimately, and then I was watching an interview with, uh, what's her name, the girl that does, uh, Phoebe Dinevor. Um, and she was like, look, I got to the point where it was just like, oh, fuck it. Like, I'm just gonna do what I think is my best take for this character and, you know, fuck, fuck the rest. Because ultimately, there are so many things that are outside of your control and you can only do your best and your best rendition of this character. So, yeah. So as, as I said, when we were discussing who, then you can go, okay, the world is my character. Let's say that her name is Marie. Marie Stroganoff, <laughs> I don't know. And then her uh, views of the world would be, the world is my oyster. The world is big. The world is scary. The world is full of people. And the world is fun. And the world is colorful. And it's even though there might be a contradiction between my oyster and scary, I think she was, she said, then um, that's good because that gives you layers. It just, it's a more real character. Okay. And then you say marriage is scary. Marriage is uh, forced. Marriage is uh, an olden thing. And so that then you're giving drama and conflict because even though she loves her partner dearly and is super turned on by him and like, uh, you know, because she described him as super sexy and, and really kind. So like they, they're super in love, but she has negative connotations or ideas connected to marriage, then that's going to bring conflict. And that's what we want in drama. We want, we, that's why we're like on the edge of our seats and we're like, oh, what's she going to say? what's gonna happen uh, okay so uh yeah so just explore every theme so for instance if then if they talk about if he comes into the scene with a lemon pie in his hands before proposing okay lemon pies are lemon pies are uh 
outdated lemon pies are uh sweet lemon pies are ridiculous lemon pie so it's like you just have to have an opinion about everything as a character because we do ultimately like you know it's like as a person you have an opinion about this it's like either oh i think it's really like fancy and nice someone would be like oh it's kind of drab it's just gray or have an opinion about my hair it's like it's not done or it's like the roots are showing whatever or you could be like oh it's really cool and it's just out there the sofa it's like we always have we are always judging and we're always having opinions and that that's what makes really good acting is that we are looking at all those details so that when you know if you have uh, the establishing shot when she comes into the room then we see that her eyes are going and looking around but it's not just like an empty looking around which would be bad acting it's more like oh yeah like even though you're not like having you might have thoughts that come into your head as a character as like oh that's a really funny looking chair um but you have natural feelings that come up by looking at that door because that door means something to you because your character has lived and opened and closed that door a million times right and so that's by exploring every single thing that's on the scene and on set um it just makes you a more believable character because in real life we have opinions about everything and we have history with everything even if it's the first time that we're entering this room we have possibly seen that tv before or we have ideas we think tv television is a waste of time or we think television is a great escape that's going to be a totally different reaction and my character might be judging like television's a waste of time or television's a great escape i get you you know what i mean those subtle differences, especially on screen, make a world of a difference and it informs us of who the character is. Okay, so we also looked at who. So we have what I want, um, why I want it, who am I, where am I, when is it? So it'd be a very different scene if it's Saturday at 9 a.m. and we are a morning person or if it's Saturday at 1 a.m. and we are a night person or if it is Monday at 5 a.m. or if it's Sunday at 5 a.m. Uh, at 5 a.m. Um, that just and, and and when it's also like is it summer is it fall what's the temperature outside um, those <clears throat> just show us stuff so for instance if it's the coldest day of the year and it is 5 a.m. on a Sunday and you're like um even though you're just doing the scene it just informs and you don't have to show that it's sunday 5 a.m the coldest day of the year but it just informs the scene you know if it's summer the hottest day of the year um and it is sunday at 5 a.m you're like that's a whole different scene just because there's nuances and you're the only one that needs to know about that and you might ask yourself but what if i make all this character work and I imagine all these things and then I get on set and then they tell me it is not Sunday at 5 a.m. It is Sunday at 5 p.m. doesn't matter. You're going to quickly take that on board and switch it because the truth is they might change lines at the last minute. But all the character work that you've done has informed you of how your character would act if it were up having the scene a Sunday at 5 a.m. It's It doesn't take away from your job. It actually just adds more layer to it. So all the work that you're doing in, into a character, even if it turns out that you have to completely shift it, it still informs it. At the very least, it makes you a really good actor because um, you're still practicing your craft, which is ultimately all that we can do, just practicing our craft. So yeah, we explored the five whys, we explored the 12 guideposts from Michael Shirtleff. Um, I, I have them right here. I'm not gonna go into them because you can just find them online and they're pretty self-explanatory but at the same time I would definitely suggest to get the book because he has transcripts of, of conversations of with like students which I think is really helpful and um, so you look at the relationship at the conflict moment before huge humor opposites discoveries communication importance find the events place game plan mystery mischief so um go into each of those guideposts that's what I do 12 guideposts I also do the five w's um, I do the imagination work from here and I also uh, do a very physical, um, well, I mean, you can do a physical warm up before an audition because it makes you like be better at it. 
but um but also physically i like to always say the text and say the text to someone else because um oh, i just need to turn this oh sorry so i'm just gonna grab some water Okay, to finish it off, um, if I have an audition and if you've done all this work inside your head and writing it down, whatever, but you haven't said those words out loud, it's a whole different experience. So just trust me, grab like your mom, your friend, ideally the best actor that you know, and just say like, hey, can I just have you for two minutes? And let's just run this scene. And then by you actually acting with a friend um, or the best actor you know, the scene, it informs you of things that you didn't know. So always, 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 always do the scene out loud with someone else. And unless you're like in a very remote house in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi connection and the only thing you have is you, then I would suggest like grab a teddy bear and say the lines to the teddy bear at the very least say the lines out loud um and one thing that i like to do i'm just going to finish this off but I, hopefully this gives you an idea that there is so much to do with an audition scene and the beautiful thing is that it's a long journey of discovery and that every time that you go to class you're going to learn something every time that you pick a book about acting you're going to learn something every time that you see a show uh, i would suggest like go to theater shows the ones that are like um like on opening night when you see them making mistakes i love that because it informs me sort of how they recover from mistakes and stuff like that but anyway um one exercise that i would suggest with text is for instance if the line is i am olivia i'll live for short then i would say i am olivia i am olivia i am olivia i'll live for short i'll live for a short i'll live for short it's like uh, by changing the stress of the sentence, it changed the meanings and it also un helps you have a better idea of what the character is like um, because you just explore different ways that that character would say that line. And then you'll figure out which one feels the best way to say it. And you're just exploring and exploring is the only way to do it. There is no perfect audition. There is no perfect way because we are live human beings. So it's actually in the rawness, the more that you let go, the more that you stop seeking perfection and just are the character, the better the job will be. So don't, there is no perfect character. There is no perfect audition. There is none. I used to think that's what actors told me that they themselves hadn't found it. And I was like, it's bullshit. I'm going to find the perfect character. I'm going to find the perfect audition. Thing is, when you're shooting a scene, um, that's going to be perfect for that moment. Like, and then the next take, you have to let it go and start from fresh with zero preconceived ideas of exactly like you can have guideposts of like, okay, I know that in this line, my character needs to raise her glass. And then this time she needs to look at him kind of like in a disapproving way. Other than that, you're sort of free to like, how you get to that place, why she picks up her glass, why she looks at that person dis disapprovingly. Those are your choices, right? And the, the whole point of acting is discovering. It really is. Um, and I, I hope this information has been useful. And I really hope that it's not the first time that you've heard these things because um, just means that you're doing really well. And I just wish you all the best. Take care.